I think it was, clearly it was great. You know, he had great numbers, he had production, but we always knew it was really tough. I think it gets overlooked that he's a tough player as far as how he tackles. He's a really good tackler, which is essential in our defense. We ask a lot of our, you know, corners. Everyone's got to be able to tackle, run and hit, be physical, be violent. He does that. And it was just good to see how, how he got some recognition this year and how he got a little bit more production on his PBUs and his interceptions. And I think he just keeps taking those steps as he matures and becomes that leader. He's just, he's just internally motivated, and the group that he's around, I think all those guys motivate each other, and you know, can't wait to get him back. He was saying he should have had 10. Right? Of course, and all those guys <laughs> said that, right? If you drop any, if you're close at all, that should count, yeah. which is the right mindset. I love that. So like when that. you ran the, the ball meetings last year, you watched kind of close call turnovers as well, uh, uh, takeaways? Huh. Yeah, I always... I kind of call it, I used to call it like house rules. And that would be for the offense too. Like, you know, growing up in my house, my pops always said like, if it touches your hands, you got to catch it. You know, you throw a ball and we complain because it bounce off. Yeah. Of Come on pops, so he's not going to touch your hands. You got to catch it. So that we have the same mentality just for our whole team. Like, hey, did it touch your hands? You said the same thing. So if there are ones that close, really it starts with, okay, how could they have gotten themselves in a better position, whether it was at the line of scrimmage or if they're from depth, could they have, you know, melted on the quarterback better, or if they were in the post, could I have maybe been off the quarterback better in my break? Could I got on course better? And if you're a corner and man to man, or a linebacker, or a safety and man to man, maybe I could have been better at the line of scrimmage. And hey, shoot, you would have been a half step closer. That PBU could have been a pick. So I think a lot of it goes into that. But for sure, that's why I think a lot of those guys feel like, dang, I should have had that because they may have. Sometimes they see something that they should have just trusted themselves on within the route concept. When those guys are smart, they're like. Man, I knew that was coming. And I think that's where it stems with guys like Fred, not just the ones that, you know, touch their hands, but the ones that they feel like were other ops because they saw something they didn't, you know, quite trust themselves to believe and go take their shot. Nick, I presume you won't be running the ball meetings this season? Or would you still? No, no. Do you know who's going to do that? I, th I think it's going to be Brandon Stavish. Yeah. And yeah. would you still want to have some participation? Obviously, given your history with it, would you still want some participation in that? No, I mean, I still I still stress the heck out of it. Every single meeting, if there's any production or something we think is close, I'm going to always, I think it's something that permeates throughout the whole team. I think that's always the most important thing is everyone has to talk about it. That's why in in those meetings, it's always about like, what could have, what could anyone how could everybody contribute to this ball, which is really everything, which is, you know, you've got to have it to score points, right, unless you get a safety, but pretty much it's, it's all about that. So it's just being connected to that and making sure that everybody's connected to it. Given your um, your special teams background, do you have any thoughts on the new kickoff rule, and are you kind of, uh, you know, consulted at all in, in, in how this is? No, I think – I've worked with Schneider before. I think he's awesome, and, and all those guys he works with, and August and Harp, and they put a lot. I know they put a lot of time into it. I haven't, but I see it. We kind of read articles about how everyone's talking. I think there's going to be a lot of what they've said that they're going to kind of learn on the fly. I think they have good plans. I think we have a, Aaron Schneider's talk about it here and there. I think he's got a great plan, and I think it's being fundamentally sound. And then you know, like anything, it's a, a copycat league. I think that. Once you start to see something, it'll probably keep showing up. And Schneider is one of the best in the league, and he'll be all over it. You, you were known for your speed. I mean, would a guy like you nowadays be as valuable um, on on kicking? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. You, 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 it's, not, it's early, but with Renardo Green, how have you seen him kind of fitting in a little bit with the veterans and how he's picking everything up? I've been really happy with Renardo. The cool thing is, is he's moving. You know, he's been doing both nickel and corner, mm -hmm. and it's not a lot of time, right? You know, it's a certain amount of practices, and hasn't fully been a nickel. So he's really embraced the challenge of it. That's the best part. Like, it's never perfect because now all of a sudden we're teaching you all these different coverages, but there's also run fits too, and then that changes. And guess what? You can't, like, fully trigger and, you know, feel the physicality of the line because there's rules, and those guys aren't playing the same. But just with him, it's just the mentality and the competitiveness that I love. We knew the movement skill was there, and you see the man-to-man -man stuff, and he gets those too. But just, like, he's embraced any challenge that's – anything that's hard, I think, is he's embraced and he's kind of attacked it and willingly been like, no, man, I want more of that. And that's really been awesome. Isaac Adam was a free agent that didn't get a lot of hype when he was brought in, but you guys have been running them with the ones effectively a bunch. What did you expect when you guys signed him, and what has he done so far since he's been on the team? I think with Ike, he came into the league and he kind of bounced around for a while. But 
everything we had heard about him and you see is what he's been when he got here. He's kind of self-made, like he works. He's very serious. Um, I think when he came to signing, he actually like went and got a workout after he signed. Like I've never seen that. He's, but that's him. And I think that's what's kind of showing up with, with who he is. And he's very meticulous in, in this stuff. Oh, my bad. The stuff that showed up later in the year with him and how he competed against a lot of really good receivers. I think it's it's been awesome that we're seeing that now too. He's very technical. He's very strong, and I think he's a guy that's also like we talk about Mooney being strong and a tackler. He's got that in his history as well. Like he's a tough guy. He's physical. He plays with his hands. He's violent. He's, he communicates. He sees things before they happen, and that stuff is showing up. No, no pads. What you seen from the two Um, a lot of explosiveness. You're right. It, it's hard to evaluate D line, but. You still watch all the individual and stuff like that. Um, they know how to practice too, so it's like you want to show the explosiveness. And every now and then, when you get a chance to win, let's win, but stay away from the quarterback. And obviously, Leonard's got a ton of experience at doing that for so long. He's been the other thing too about them that I see is like they're studs, like stud guys. Like they just go. Like they don't. Like Leonard acts like you know he's just barely trying to make the team. He just goes every single day. He doesn't get tired. Um, that part's been awesome. Him and uh, Etor and you know Jordan was going the same way. And um, that that part's like I said. It's I feel like all the guys that we brought in are 49er guys. Like all the rookies, whether they're drafted or undrafted, all the free agents. And that's to me why this offseason has been so fun. It's been so fun because our guys have worked so hard and including our coaches. Like when you put like hard work into it and then you start to see it come out and, and the communication and dealing with the, the shifts and the motions that our offense gives us that a lot of the league does as well, it's, it makes it really, really fun. Especially when they're working so hard. A couple more. Uh, coach, just kind of wondering, if they be great, how are you wearing a sweatshirt? I just am used to it. I wore a t-shirt yesterday and it felt weird. I'm just always pants and a sweatshirt. Now that you've had a couple of OTAs Yeah, I'm, like I said, I, I truly am having fun because even for like the work does pay off, and I'm putting the you know you put the time in and it makes sense, and you have guys you're surrounded with that you're coaching and that you're coaching with, and it truly has been fun. It really has, and I'm, I, today was a blast. We got to have some move the ball stuff, so we got to you know it wasn't scripted, and I think the cool part too of being in this role when you're scripting for practice, I'm more connected with Kubiak and Kyle and. Um, even Lombardi make that we can, you know, you just get to talk to guys more. So you, as you're scripting and looking for certain looks that are going to be hard for you or, or good for you or scripted for certain players, you also learn more football. So it's it's just been fun being more connected with the offensive guys through this whole process too. You mentioned Bruce looked really good. What do you see from him in, in the second year? Again, right when you see him, stout, built a lot like Mooney. He's he's big. He's got length, and he's learning to use that. I think with him. It stunk because we saw we were excited for him really quick last year when he got here, you know, and then got injured pretty quickly. And then when he came back, it was, you know, mid season or later in the season, and then saw some flashes. And so we're just, it's about growth. And again, he's a competitive guy. He's really smart. He's a, a guy that really, really, really cares. So seeing him progress and utilize his size and his length and then his brain and how he sees things, he's progressed the right way. And just can't wait to see him when he comes back after these 40 days. You mentioned we're not accepting challenges. I saw a team rep in the slot ended up on Pearsall. Yeah. I, I don't know if you did that purposely, obviously. You can't do that. But do you relish something like that to see the top two picks kind of going at each other? Absolutely. Yeah. I, I mean, I wish we could have, like, one-on-ones in this. But, you know, CBA, you can. So you look for those opportunities to, you know, try and get guys in. All right, let's give him a man rep here. Or let's give him this run fit versus this coverage and this zone or that. All right, this guy struggled. So... You know, you kind of look for opportunities to get guys matched up if you can. Good. All right. Thanks, Thanks guys. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you.